Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for France for EU4 1.32 Origins. So France is a nation located in the region of, well, France. We do start off with five subjects, these five French nations right here, and we're one of the most powerful nations in the game, a number fifth great power, and one of the most popular nations in the game for newer and older players alike, which is evidenced by the fact that you guys have been asking me to do a guide for them for 1.32 for a while now. By using this guide you'll be expanding in every direction especially with the changes to aggressive expansion in 1.32 you'll be conquering all of france getting the burgundian succession conquering the british isles PUing various nations expanding in italy in north africa and everywhere else and before we begin if you enjoy this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you want to see more guides or more u4 videos in general definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything let's take a look at what we need to do as france so when you start your game the first thing i recommend for you to check is if burgundy is friendly with you we need to be able to ally and royal marry Burgundy right at the start, which increases our chances of not fighting them and actually getting the Burgundian succession ourselves by quite a lot. It would be even better if they also rivaled Austria, which hasn't happened in my case, but if it does happen in your case, that's excellent and your chances of getting the Burgundian inheritance are super super high. So restart until you can ally and royal marry Burgundy, that's pretty much the only condition. But first, you're gonna go into your estates and summon the diet, and you can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're gonna give the clergy, religious state, clerical advisory council, and religious diplomats. The nobility starts off with the French strong duchy's privilege, which gives us plus three diplomatic relations instead of the plus two like the regular one. This is a good one, we do wanna have it, and it's a good thing we start off with it. And then we're also gonna give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and the nobility integration policy. Then we're gonna give the bourgeoisie land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board and indebted to the bourgeoisie. Then we're gonna activate the encouraged development state edict in the state of Poitou right here and we're gonna dev this province over here up once in Diplo. Then we're gonna sell titles and seize land. Now it's time for some advisors. Get whichever level 1 admin advisor you want. I only have this prestige guy, although this guy and this guy, they are half cost, so you might wanna hire them. I am actually gonna take this yearly inflation reduction guy. He is 50% cheaper than a regular level 2 advisor. Get whichever Diplo advisor you want, preferably a Diplo rep, improve relations or a spy network guy, although there is a scripted guy, once again half cost right here, and he's an improved relations guy, so I do recommend getting this guy. And get whichever level 1 mill advisor you want, there are no scripted mill guys, I recommend a morale, discipline or fort defense guy, I have a discipline guy. We are losing money right now, but we do have a ton in reserve, and this will fix itself pretty soon. Next, it's time to start building some stuff. We're gonna take this army right here, and put the three maneuver guy on them, and send them down to Armagnac. And on this army, we're gonna attach this other leader. And we're gonna hire six infantry regiments. One for this army right here, and five more for this one right here. And there we go, I just built one, and I'm gonna build five more for the army that's coming down from the north. Now it's time to build some boats, we don't really have a lot of sailors, but we are gonna start building two transports immediately, and we're gonna start building three galleys, because that's all the sailors we have, and then we're gonna build three more galleys once you get more sailors. Now it's time to sort out our relations. We're gonna start off by allying Burgundy and royal marrying Castile, and once these diplomats are back, we're also gonna ally the Pope and Royal Mary Milan. But since we do have a free guy, we're gonna cancel some relations as well. We are gonna dissolve our alliance with Provence, and once that guy is back, we're also gonna revoke our guarantee on Scotland. A very important thing you need to do here is you need to send a royal marriage offer to Burgundy, not the other way around. Don't accept a royal marriage from Burgundy if they send one to you, because then when their ruler dies, you actually won't be eligible for the Burgundian success because that royal marriage will break once the ruler dies. So, it is very important that you yourself send a royal marriage offer to Burgundy. And there we go, it's December 12th, and by this point you should have arranged all your relations. Basically, I've royal married all my subjects, cancelled my alliance with Provence, cancelled the guarantee over Scotland, and I've allied and royal married Burgundy and Castile, and I've allied the Pope, and I've royal married Milan. So those are our relations once one month has passed. And now that one month has passed, we can actually declare our first war, which is of course going to be versus England. We're not gonna be waiting for the surrender of main event to fire because they declare a restoration of Union 
Ukraine war, whereas if we declare a war right here, we'll be declaring a reconquest war and we can take a lot more. So it is time to declare. We're gonna declare it for Maine right here. We are gonna call in Burgundy with the promise of land and we are gonna give them land actually. You kind of want to keep Burgundy occupied so they don't get into stupid wars themselves like the classic Burgundy versus Liege war where they're probably gonna lose versus Austria. So anytime you can call in Burgundy to one of your wars, you should call them in and you should give them land too. Like versus England, maybe we can give them Calais up here versus Provence, maybe we can give them these provinces over here versus Savoy too. We can give them some stuff here so you can totally feed Burgundy as much as you want and you're gonna try and keep them occupied as much as you can. So like I said, it is time to declare on England. You can declare for whichever province. I'm gonna declare for Maine, like I said, and we're gonna call in Burgundy with the promise of land. If they don't wanna come in your case, it's totally fine. It's not that necessary, but you should call them in. And of course, right before this war, we're also gonna set rivals, mainly England and whoever else you want, maybe someone like Austria, and I'm also gonna rival Denmark too. So it's time to declare. Now once this war has started, you're not gonna focus on this right here at all. You're gonna let your subjects and Burgundy do the work up in the French region. Whereas you, with your armies, you're gonna focus down on Portugal. Portugal should ask for military access through Castile or maybe England. If they don't, you can just ask for access through Castile yourself. And you should also ask for access through Granada so you can go and siege down this province right here, Ceuta. Sometimes the Portuguese ships will be here, but you can pretty easily cross once you catch them while they're not here. They won't really focus on this. So send your armies to mainland Portugal and then down to Ceuta. During this point, you can also start improving relations with your allies and your subjects. And there we go. As we can see in my case, there are no Portuguese ships here in the Straits of Gibraltar, so I can simply cross over to Ceuta. And I'm gonna take the bigger army over to Evora and then Lisbon. The smaller army goes to Ceuta. I do recommend stacking the entirety of the army here even though you're gonna attrition because you don't want the big stack getting caught in Gibraltar and the small one in Ceuta. Once you completely obliterate Portugal, and this should be super easy, here's what you're gonna take from them in the peace deal. You are gonna take the province of Ceuta for yourself and we're also gonna take war reps and all their money. If you want, you can break their alliance with England too. I'm also gonna make them end a rivalry so I get some more prestige. That sounds about right. And that's Portugal out of the war very easily. And we have a foothold in Northern Africa. In Ceuta, I recommend turning it into a trade company immediately, so we don't have to deal with the unrest from it being a wrong religion. At this point, I'm also sieging down the board with the small army, and I'm just gonna send the big army back up to France. As we can see, Burgundy and their subjects have already done most of the work. And once you fully occupy everything that England owns in continental France, it's time to just sit back, relax, until you get enough war score to take back your cores over here, to give Calais to Burgundy, make sure to transfer occupation of course, and to get the province of Pale or Dublin for yourself. That's about 77% war score in my case. Although you could wait even more to get war reps. Of course we do have ticking and I can get 9.4 more war score in my case. During this time you should also start spying on Brittany. If you don't want to wait around to get the max war score possible or if you don't want to naval invade England, of course you could peace out way earlier. If you do want to peace out way earlier and not take everything from England that I just said, here's what I recommend taking. Of course, once again, you should give Calais to Burgundy. You should take all of these provinces up in the north for yourself. Don't take anything down here, we'll take care of it later. And you should take the province of Dublin, war reps and as much money as you can. And that's your first war with England done. At this point, you will be able to take the mission Reconquer Normandy where this event happens. There we go. And now it's time to chill for just a little bit and get ready to declare our next war. From this, we should have literally no aggressive expansion since we did our reconquest war. Once you've taken Dublin up here, don't start coring it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set all of these provinces over here as provinces of interest. And we're gonna start spying on some of these guys over here. Basically, everyone you can touch. I'm gonna start spying on Lannister down here, these guys as well and these guys over here as well. I'm gonna get spy networks on everyone I surround, and then we're gonna be releasing the nation of Meath from this province. When you get the event the Duke of Alençon, you can basically pop out a vassal from this province right here, and you get another vassal, and you get more nobility influence, which is not a very good thing, or you can simply keep the province, but you do lose one stability. I, of course, do recommend keeping this province even though you lose one stability, but it's pretty much up to you if you wanna deal with another vassal. 
Once a little bit of time has passed, it is time to declare your next war, and this time it's gonna be in the region of France, well, it was last time as well, but it was versus England, and in your second war, you're gonna be fighting one of three nations. It really depends on your scenario, whichever one of them is the weakest, but you'll be fighting either Brittany, Provence, or Savoy. Now, it really doesn't matter, like I said, which one you fight, it depends on, in your case, which one is the easiest, but something you do wanna check is if some of these nations' rulers are excommunicated, and it does happen pretty often that the Pope excommunicates either Provence or Savoy. So let's see in my case Provence isn't excommunicated and let's check Savoy here. Savoy actually is excommunicated here in my case. Now don't worry if this doesn't happen in your game. You'll still be declaring a regular war versus either of these three guys. But if you do find an opportunity to declare on a nation that's been excommunicated, you should do that. And we can see right here in my case, since Savoy is excommunicated, Austria won't defend them and they're also allied to Aragon who won't help out because they're in a war versus Tunis. So this is a perfect opportunity for me. In your case, it may be easier to declare on Provence or on Brittany. It doesn't matter, one of these three nations. So I am gonna set these provinces right here as provinces of interest, since that's where I'm interested in expanding. And as you all know, Geneva is a Savoy subject, so if Burgundy wants to join my war here, I may feed some of these provinces to Burgundy. So there we go, I'm gonna declare on Savoy here for the conquest of Brescia and call in Burgundy we'll probably give them some land. I'm actually gonna call in the Pope as well to help out versus Florence, although none of these allies are needed in this war. And there we go, that's my first war in the region of France. You could be fighting Provence or Brittany as well. And I am gonna show you what to take from them in the wars I'm gonna do with them myself, but later. Like I said, it's a good idea to keep Burgundy occupied, so even if you're not giving them stuff and you're fighting someone like Brittany, you should still call them in, even though you totally don't need their help. By this point, I've also deleted a couple of forts to save money. We really do have a lot more forts than we need. I deleted the one in Cayenne and the one in Chartres. For your naval doctrine, I recommend selecting shipboarding for a chance to capture enemy ships plus 33%. You won't be building another boat while you're playing the game. And now that I've wrapped up my war versus Savoy, here's what I'm gonna be taking from them, and this is the same stuff that you should take from them as well. I'm gonna be taking these two provinces right here, their capital and Brescia, of course. The aggressive expansion is super low because I'm using the excommunicated ruler CB, but you'll be taking these even if you're not using that CB. And you should give all of these provinces here from their subject Geneva to Burgundy. Like I said, we are gonna be growing Burgundy as much as we can as well. If you want, you can take some more stuff down here, although I do think it'll be too much aggressive expansion because we're gonna be fighting other guys as well so we don't really want to get into that so no matter which CB you're using take these two for yourself and give these three to Burgundy and like this we'll be easily able to enter Italy I'll also take war reps and all their money and that's our war versus Savoy done it doesn't matter if you're doing it now or if you're gonna do it a little bit later because you're fighting one of these two guys now now it's time to chill a bit and choose another route of expansion. Once you've gotten claims on most of the nations that surround the province of Pale over in Ireland, as we can see I've gotten claims on four nations that border me, I could also get a claim on these guys and these guys, but we don't want to drag this out for too long. Once you've gotten those claims, you are going to be releasing the nation of Meath, like I said earlier. And boom, there we go, we have a subject in Ireland, which we're going to feed all of Ireland too. So, at this point, once you've fought your war in France, you can choose to either go down south and expand in the Maghreb, or or go up north in Ireland and expand over there. In my case, I'm gonna be going for Ireland first, and that is a bit easier than fighting Morocco during this point. Although, you can easily defeat Morocco as well, as long as they're not allied to the Ottomans, of course. With some of your diplomats, you should be spying on nations you're gonna be getting ready to fight, because we are a little quicker than our mission tree, but we're also not following it along correctly. As you can see in my case, I'm spying on Brittany, I'll get as much claims as I can on them as possible, and I think I'll also start spying on Provence as well. And now that I am up here in Ireland, Ireland, I am gonna declare on some of these guys right here. You're gonna be doing the same fight, whoever is easiest to fight out of these guys. Let's see Ulster here, they're allied to Thomond, which is this nation down here. What happens if we co-belligerent them? We also drag in these guys. What happens if we co-belligerent them? Perfect. We're gonna be fighting this guy, this guy, and this guy. So, that's my first war. And you're gonna fight as many nations as you can here. You could even fight some that are allied to England to bring your truce with England down since you'll be white piecing them. But if you don't wanna do that, that's totally fine. And now that I've defeated all of the guys that I'm fighting over here in Ireland, I'm simply gonna transfer occupation of all of these provinces to my Irish subject. You will be doing the same, and you'll be feeding all of them to your Irish subject as well. You don't need to care about aggressive expansion over here in this region, pretty much only these guys will be mad. You'll be doing this with all of these guys until you feed all of Ireland to Meath. 
Now that we've dealt with these guys a little bit, it's time to either go back to France or go down to Morocco. By this point, 10 years will have passed in game time and you do need to start annexing some of your French subjects right here. I'm gonna start annexing Armagnac right here. You may want to check to see if you can take this papal power right here, send papal legate, which gives us minus 10% diplo annex cost. And like I said, now that we've chilled a bit, we're either going to be declaring on a French nation once again, of course you want to check aggressive expansion first, or we're going to be going down to Morocco. In my case, I have gone down to Morocco, and I am going to be declaring on them for the conquest of Tangier over here, which I spied on them for just now. I'm also going to call in Castile to help, even though it's not really necessary. It is going to be annoying to fight Morocco, especially because of their super annoying fort over here in Fez, but you'll easily be able to do it with yourself or even with the help of Castile if you want to. If Milan gets to the event where they become the Abrosian Republic, you will get the event, the Milanese Succession, where you can choose the throne belongs to us and we get a restoration of Union CB on Milan or we have a no interest in Milan where we don't get that CB. Of course, you are going to choose this option to get a restoration of Union CB on them, but the time frame to declare that war is super super short and of course there's a chance that this might not happen at all in your game but if it does once you get that cb once you get that event you immediately have to declare a war on them here's why we do have the restoration of union cb on us and it does say that it's valid until 1483 but i think we lose it once they lose this initial ruler that they start the new government form with i may be wrong here and sorry that i haven't checked but what i recommend is as soon as you get that restoration of union cb it is time to declare on them or you could even wait until 1460 if you have an opportunity to do so like in my case because this guy will be around until 1461 but milan leaves the hre in 1460 so we'll avoid fighting hesse and all their boys over here either way this is not something super important milan isn't that huge of a nation to get a pu on them so it doesn't really matter if you do it i'm gonna wait around in my case until 1460 until they leave but if i lose my cb over them i lose it and i'm not gonna be too bummed out over it because it's not something super important like PU in Castile or Burgundy or someone like that. But if you can, you should take advantage of this right away. For your first idea group as France, I recommend opening up with diplomatic or influence ideas or even admin because we will be struggling with GovCap very, very soon. Now, of course, it's not the most optimal way to open up with an admin idea group since it does slow down your second idea group, but you can open with admin if you want to, in my opinion. But what I recommend is actually going with diplomatic first. This will help us a lot with province war score cost, minus 10% diplo tech cost is super super great. We definitely need that diplo rep and those relations and those diplomats to improve with all the outraged countries and the lowered impact on stability from diplomatic actions will help us to rack up a few random PUs. Overall, diplomatic ideas is a great opener for any single player campaign, especially with a massive blobbing one such as France. Of course, we are already focusing on Diplo since the start. For your tier 2 government reform, of course, I recommend taking strength and noble privileges. Once you beat up Morocco down here enough, here's what I recommend taking from them. I recommend that you take Tangier, Saleh, Tetuan, and Melia from them as well. In my case though, Castile have occupied these two, since I did forget to set them as provinces of interest before we started the war, but it's not really a big deal. You should take these four, however, in my case, since I haven't occupied them, I'm gonna take these two, along with the super annoying Fort in Fez, and the province of Garb as well. I'm also gonna take war reps and all their money. Sure, you could rush Demnate for the Eid Benadu, it is a super super strong monument and you could rush Tafilal as well for the gold mine although I don't think that's really needed we'll get them in the second or third war I don't think the gold province is that important as France of course you will see a lot of aggressive expansion from this but it doesn't really matter since only Morocco and these other Maghrebi nations here will be mad so no need to care about aggressive expansion in this war right here and that's your first war with Morocco done. You should have taken these four provinces. Of course, once you've taken them, don't forget to immediately add them to a trade company, mainly the Sevilla one from these ones over here, and the Safi one in the other provinces that you're gonna take. With this, we won't care too much about the religious disunity and stuff like that. And of course, you will have three forts if you've taken stuff like me. You don't need this one, you can delete it. You don't need this one either, you can delete it. The one in Fez is more than enough. One of the most annoying forts in the game, and it projects a very wide zone of control. 
control as well. One more thing you can do down here is release the nation of Fez. They don't have a lot of cores just on these provinces right here, but you could feed them stuff if you want to. I did suggest that in my previous guide, although for this guide, I'm switching it up a bit and I don't really recommend doing that. You can if you want to, it's not necessary. And there we go, the Shadow Kingdom incident did just end in my case here and all the Italian nations have left the HRE and I still have the PUCB over Milan, which means I can declare on them without fighting the Emperor, which is Hesse funnily enough and not Austria, so I will be declaring on them with the Restoration of Union CB. I would call on Burgundy to keep them busy, but they're already busy fighting Provence, which is actually great. I do want Burgundy to take these provinces over here. Them being bigger means I get more land later, and I'm just helping them out in this war. So I'll be declaring on Milan. Like I said, this isn't guaranteed to happen in your case, but if it does, that's great. I am gonna call in Castile and the Pope just to make this war easier. And Burgundy just pieced out Provence and oh my god, they took these two provinces for themselves, which is fine, but they also gave me Anjou and all these three down here in the south, as you can see right here. Now this may be a little too much aggressive expansion, Burgundy, I don't mean to be ungrateful, but this does mess things up a little bit for me, since it will slow me down. I wouldn't have taken that much from them myself personally. But either way, it's great. I just got some provinces from Provence and Burgundy just got some as well. Now since I won't be able to demonstrate what to take from Provence when you fight your own war, I actually recommend feeding Burgundy all of these provinces over here, or at least as much as you can from over here, not to give them a coalition of course, and taking as little for yourself as possible in that Provence war. So once again in that war the priority is feeding Burgundy rather than taking stuff for ourselves. So I would probably give Burgundy maybe Metz and Lorraine and only take Anjou for myself, and then in the next war give them these two and take these three for myself, or something like that. Basically split Provence between between yourself and Burgundy in two different wars. And now that I've finished my war with Milan, I'll simply be PUing them. If you have this war, you'll be doing the same. As we can see, the aggressive expansion isn't too high. Of course, it'll vary in your case based on how many provinces they have. In my case, they've lost Parma, but in your case, they could have grown a bit. And you shouldn't be at a risk of a coalition when you do this, but in my case, I am, since Burgundy decided to feed me that many provinces. But it doesn't matter, you'll be PUing them either way. And that's done. Like I said, this isn't something that's guaranteed to happen, but it could happen. Of course, you'll be feeding back their cores from Venice later if they don't have them, and you can grow them a bit in Northern Italy. In my case, I've also found myself in a defensive war versus Switzerland right here, but I'll simply be white piecing them or maybe giving provinces to Burgundy. After you've wrapped up your war in Morocco, you should either go back to France like I did, sorta, in my Provence war with Burgundy, or you can go up to Ireland again. And by this point, your truce with England should have expired, and you should be getting ready for your second war versus them. For your first stage ability, you should of course select Justified Wars. And when it's time to fight your second war versus England, you're gonna take both of your armies up in Ireland, and first you're gonna ask for military access through Scotland if they still exist, if not of course you're gonna be landing yourself. Let your allies do the work over here in provinces they have left over in France and versus Portugal, and we're simply gonna be declaring on England for a reconquest of one of these two down here. I recommend Bordeaux since it does have higher dev and just call in all your allies, and it's time to declare. You can put your fleet over here in the Irish Sea to give you time to cross, and you should be able to cross very easily easily. And focus on sieging down England with your main armies, and your subjects can do the work over here. And once you defeat England in your second war, which is once again gonna be super super easy, here's what I recommend taking from them. I recommend that you take all your provinces that are left in continental Europe, and then you should take these two provinces up here, so we can pop out a vassal from them, this province right here, so we can also pop out a vassal from it, war reps, all their money, and then these two provinces right here, no vassals will be released from these, as well as man right here. So. That's it. Your province is back, these provinces over here, money and war reps. And boom, your second war with England is done. Now we can also take a mission, reconquer Gascony, and these further missions down here, which gives us some permaclaims and some nice modifiers as well. And from these provinces up here, we're gonna be releasing the nations of Wales, they have of course we can reconquer over here these three provinces and we're also going to be releasing Northumberland they're going to pop out from these two provinces and they have cores on these four down here and that's your second war with England done now it's time to continue conquests elsewhere like France or the Maghreb or even Ireland depending on your aggressive expansion basically we're switching around between these few areas of expansion I'll be continuing my next wars in Ireland it's time to finish off these nations right here I'll be declaring on Lannister I'll also be declaring on these guys right here. 
make sure to always improve relations with Burgundy. You want to keep it as close to 200 as possible. Now that I've defeated these nations in Ireland, once again, I'll be feeding everything to the subject, Meath. Aggressive expansion from these guys, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter. If at any point you do find yourself over governing capacity in this earlier portion of the game, like I have found myself, you can totally give the clergy clergy land rights. Now that I've chilled a bit, I will be declaring my next war, this time versus Morocco. Like I said earlier, we're diversifying conquests between these three regions right here, and down here, the aggressive expansion is the lowest, so I'll be declaring on Morocco. I do have the Holy War CB versus them because the Pope has called for a crusade. I will once again call in Castile, even though I don't need them. For your second idea group as France, I do recommend taking admin ideas. This will help us out a lot with the core cost reduction, the possible advisors are great, the interest per annum is great, admin tech cost minus 10%, mm -mm -mm, that's so good, and the most important one, plus 25% golf cap. The mercenary stuff is awesome for conserving manpower as well, although we're not really short on manpower. So admin ideas for your second idea group. At this point, you should unfocus from Diplo, but don't focus on admin. And this is why I said at the start you need to keep Burgundy busy. They just declared on Austria. Now I gotta go help them out. When your rulers die, don't forget to immediately re-Royal Mary Burgundy. And once your second war with Morocco or whoever is here is done, you're gonna be taking as much as you can from them. Of course, in my case, since I'm using the Holy War CB, aggressive expansion is much lower and I can take a lot more. But you would probably take something like this, these provinces over here, maybe Fez in the second war as well, since you would have taken these provinces over here in North Morocco in the first war. In my case, I'm gonna be taking all of this since I do get such little aggressive expansion from this. Of course, I could take a lot more and even take the gold mine in Tafilal, but that's simply too much admin points for me for now. So I am gonna dial it back, I'm not gonna take as much as possible, I'm simply gonna finish off North Morocco here and this area right here, Garb, and I'm also gonna do something like this to get Tafilalt. The gold mine, like I said, it isn't that important, but you can take it if you want to. Of course, you're not gonna be trade companying this area right here, but you are gonna trade company everything else, just like this. I'll add everything to Sevilla and I'll add everything to Safi, but I'm gonna click on Tafilalt and remove it from a trade company. For your tier 3 government reform, I recommend taking centralized bureaucracy. Now that I've finished helping out Burgundy in their war versus Austria, I will be finishing off these nations in Ireland. And just like that, this little war here is done and all of Ireland now belongs to our subject, Meath. You could start annexing them as soon as you want, provided you have the gov cap, which I don't. Now that I've wrapped things up over in Ireland, I'll be declaring on Brittany and taking out basically the final nation in the region of France. Of course, you could have fought them earlier, you could have full annexed them, vassalized them, you could be fighting Provence or Savoy now, it doesn't matter. The point is, I just fought in Morocco over here, I'm done there, I just fought in Ireland, I'm done there, so now I'm back to France. We're diversifying, you get the point. And there we go. By the way, I'm not fighting Clemson, just helping out Castile. And once you finish off Brittany or whoever you're fighting in France during this point, you could either vassalize them or full annex them. In my case, I am gonna vassalize Brittany here because I am over governing capacity and I am working on an admin idea group and I do have free diplo slots. So it's up to you whether you full annex them or vassalize them. And this is not just them, this is also Provence or Savoy. I'll also be taking all their money. Once you subjugate Brittany or annex them, you will be able to take this mission right here, and then you should build a dock or a dry dock in Finisterre to continue your mission tree. And by this point, your second truce with England should also be up, in which case it's time for your third war versus them. And in this war, we're simply going to be declaring a reconquest for the province of York right here, which is a Northumberland core. You can of course call in your allies again, and in my case, they've even allied Austria, which is going to make the war more annoying, but it's still not hard at all. And that's our third war versus England started. And once you've defeated England in your third war, of course you should give back the cores to Northumberland and the cores to Wales as well, and then take, well, whatever you want for yourself. I'm gonna be taking these six provinces right here for myself, and I'm also gonna get war reps and all their money. And that's my third war versus England done. And by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. 
basically we started off as France and started our conquests versus England, took the northern half of their provinces and established a foothold in Ireland at the same time, while also piecing out Portugal for Ceuta down here. After that we continued our conquests in France, fighting one of the three nations that we need to fight, Brittany, Provence or Savoy, checking to see if some of them are excommunicated or not, it didn't matter, we fought them anyway, then continued our conquests in Ireland, and basically we rotated after that between each of these three regions, fighting in France, fighting in Morocco, and fighting in Ireland, and later in Great Britain as well. By diversifying our conquests, we managed to avoid coalitions, reduce aggressive expansion as much as we can, while blobbing out in three separate directions. By this point, you should have taken care of all nations that are in France, and you should own pretty much the entire region of France, maybe with the exception of Avignon, either directly, all of it yourself, or indirectly by having some subjects, like I have Brittany right here, and in your case, you may have also gotten the Burgundian inheritance by now, and you should have inherited a huge, huge Burgundy, because we've been feeding them this whole time, and they've been growing themselves. In my case, I gave them these three provinces right here, they also conquered this one themselves, they conquered these two themselves, and they also took Liege from Liege over here. So a pretty big Burgundy is up for inheritance in my situation. In your case, you've probably already gotten it, since in my experience it does happen in the 1480s, Charles over here in my case is 62, and Burgundy are drilling with him, so I should be getting it any time now. Of course, if they choose Austria, you can go to war with Austria, or honestly, you could just save scum it. Come on, you've been waiting for Burgundy for this long? It's pretty normal to save scum it. I don't have nothing against that. You can totally do it if you want to get the Burgundian inheritance for sure. Over in the Maghreb, you should own a huge portion of Morocco by now, basically half of them. You may have gotten the gold mine in Tafilal. Like I said, it's not that needed, but you've established a really, really strong foothold over in the Maghreb, and then you'll continue to expand all over here, basically taking over the entirety of Maghreb, you don't have to fight Castile for stuff if they take in stuff over here. Because later down the line, in our mission tree, we do get a restoration of Union CB on Castile slash Spain once we take over a bunch of stuff in Italy, mainly Naples. So no need to fight them for stuff over here, when literally later you're gonna get Castile, Aragon, and Portugal as a junior partner, and you'll inherit all of these things over here. By this point, you may have also gotten Milan as a junior partner, this isn't something that's necessary, it's basically just chance whether you'll get the event, whether they pick the Ambrosian Republic, and whether you'll PU them, this is something that's not necessary at all. And over in Great Britain, you should have all of Ireland by now, either through a subject, your subject Meath, or through yourself, depending on how you're managing governing capacity, I'm a, a little bit over as we can see, and you should have a really really strong foothold in Great Britain, basically you should own a bunch of it yourself, and you should have your subjects Northumberland and Wales over here. And by this point you should have also annexed all of your subjects in mainland France. And that is a little something what your game should look like, and what you should own either directly or indirectly with subjects. Of course you will be playing with a lot of subjects at the entirety of this run, we are limited by govcap especially in the early game, you will have a bunch of subjects constantly, whether it's vassals, junior partners, or whatever, and you may even have colonies if you choose to go the colonial route. By this point, we're a number one great power, let's face it, Ming doesn't really count, and you'd be even bigger if you've gotten the Burgundian inheritance by now, you'd be way over a thousand development, which is awesome. You may have even racked up Big Blue Blob, since this is pretty much the same strategy you need to use for Big Blue Blob, you just need to be a little faster and a little bit more aggressive. Of course, you're not going to be expanding in the Maghreb for Big Blue Blob, but owning all of France, getting the Burgundian succession, and owning almost all of Great Britain, of course all directly, is enough to get the big blue blob achievement. By this point we are making a ton of money, of course army maintenance is up for me and forts are up, but if I lower army maintenance and if I turn off forts I am making about 15 ducats a month, which is great for lowered army maintenance and turned off forts. I do have some loans, but they're just burger loans that I took out to build some buildings. And speaking of buildings, I've built marketplaces in all the center of trade provinces by now, I've built some workshops as well when I had the ducats for it, and I've built some churches too. You will ramp up construction on buildings pretty soon after this, and of course you will want to build courthouses and town halls to help with that gov cap as well. And of course later you're going to be building manufactories as well. By this point you should have a massive army, I do have two pretty big armies. They're not exactly up to combat with and ideally composed, but they will be pretty soon, I do have cannons in this north one over here. For our first idea group we took diplomatic ideas and for our second one we took admin. Now France you're supposed to sort of go colonial with them, we do have a colonial idea right here which is very nice and we do have a colonial branch of the mission tree down here. I personally don't really play colonial as France, I just steal colonies or 
basically we're gonna PU Castile slash Spain and we're gonna get all of Spain's and Portugal's colonies later anyway so there's no real need for us to colonize but if you do want to go colonial I do recommend picking up exploration and expansion for your third and fourth idea groups respectively not your first and second one but if you're like me and if you don't like going colonial since we took diplo and admin I recommend taking influence and humanist for your third and fourth idea groups respectively or influence and economic it really is up to you and after that, for your final four idea groups, you should rack up some mill ones to buff your army quality in the late game, help you fight some massive blobs like the Commonwealth, the Ottomans, Muscovy, Spain when you PU them, and stuff like that. You don't really need mill idea groups in your first four, in my opinion. For your tier four government reform, you should take meritocratic recruitment, but later down the line, when you need some more admin points, you can swap to administrative clergy. For tier five, you should take general estates, but when absolutism comes around, you should take royal decree. Decree, but if you get over 100 absolutism after about 50 or 100 years have passed, you can swap back to general estates. For tier 6, I recommend La Tassemois, and for tier 7, I recommend political absolutism. But once again, if you go over 100 absolutism, if you have 105, 110, something like that, you can totally swap the legislative houses for plus one admin possible policies. You'll have four instead of three. And policies are super useful in the late game, maybe even more useful than five absolutism. And after this point, you'll continue to expand in the same directions that we've already been expanding in. You'll continue to finish off Morocco and whoever is here in the Maghreb. If you have some nations left in France, by now if you've been a bit slower than me you'll finish them off. You'll finish off England, Scotland and whoever else is in the British Isles and then you'll continue to push into Italy. If you have Milan you can feed them a bit up here taking the rest for yourself and then you'll continue to own all of Italy, all of France, all of the British Isles. Once you PU Castile you'll own all of Iberia as well and you can start pushing into the Holy Roman Empire. Empire. And because you've taken diplomatic ideas, it will actually be pretty easy for you to ally all of the electors and then just declare war on the emperor in order to dismantle the HRE. Of course, if you do that, Denmark and the Kalmar Union, Poland and the Commonwealth and the Ottomans will become a lot stronger since they'll be able to conquer these small guys. But listen, you'll be able to conquer the small guys as well and you can continue pushing into the HRE without the fear of aggressive expansion. It'll be super easy for you to dismantle it by just allying these guys and occupying the emperor's capital due to your diplomatic ideas. And like I said by around the 1490s, your game should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities or if you're not sure if your game is gonna go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel and you can continue playing as France from this date forward. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash the Redhawk live. And if you want to catch up on stuff from over there, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like. It really helps out a lot. And if you want to see more guides or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.